Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Zanje Royal, aka Bubbles from The Wire, and you're watching the turn on. Thank you for coming and hanging Thank out you. with Thank us. This is much. a beautiful change. And I was just asking him just now, what were you mixed with? And you were just telling me. Uh, my father is Cuban, and um, my mother is Harlem. Mm -hmm. She's black with a little bit of Indian, you know, a little sprinkle <laughs> of Indian, and grew up in the Bronx. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a little bit of everything. So, I mean, can you. It's nice, and I like the couch, I like yeah. the orchids and everything. But you should have saw him when he came in, he had this really nice long black coat. I mean, just, mm, I love to see a sharp, dressed man. And well, I just have to give you props for well, that before we get all the tennis I, business. I appreciate <laughs> it. We dress for the women. We really dress for the women. Mm -hmm. You know, we like to get these little raised eyebrows, the little nipples oh, hard. Oh, really? We try to make sure that we look good for the women. After we talk a little bit, we're going, you know, maybe go back to the restaurant, down a little bit, drink a little well, wine. Well, let's talk about your daughter now. Beautiful, right. beautiful. How you throw that in there? How you throw that in there? That was the worst transition. Yeah, I'm talking about food uh, in the bedroom. Said, and she daughter. said, let's, let's slow this man down. That's how we want to slow you down. Let's just talk about your daughter. Yeah, let's talk about your daughter. Yeah. I mean, she's gorgeous and a model. She is. She was a model. Mm -hmm. She was doing a little modeling. Stella, how you doing, Stella? She's daddy. Uh, you know, the very funny thing about having a daughter, I knew when my wife was pregnant, you know, instantly I was like, okay, I want a boy, I want to have a boy. So I could teach him about hip hop, I could give him thumbs out. <laughs> and then one day, you know, I realized that if I have a boy, I might not grow up. Mm. I might just stay the same, in the same path or same road that I was in. Wow, this but, is really good to hear because the reason why I brought up your daughter, just so you know, uh, we've been talking to, you know, different men and they've been talking about being dads, hot yes. dads. Like, yes. we had John Singleton, Mario Van Peebles, Magic Johnson, they're all talking about being dads. And so, it's, this season has been really great to hear our men talk about being fathers. It's very serious. So that's why we segue right to that. So, yes. now go back into this. This perspective is different, that you didn't want a son because... You I, I wanted to grow up. I wanted to, you know, really feel... Not that, you know... Men that have sons don't right. grow up, but for me, for you, I would have still been acting wild, and, you know, bugging out a little bit. With a daughter, you really have to pay attention to everything you're doing mm. because I'm gonna be the image of what a man is to her. How so I have to, beautiful is this? I love. Yeah, this. I had to really, you know, change my vocabulary, change mm. my, you know, my just certain 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 mannerisms that I had. I had to really try to, you know, pull back and really show that. You know, you can you can have fun, you can play, you can be silly, mm -hmm. but there's certain times where you have to grow up and you wow. have to be very mature. And I wanted to, you know, instill that into into my daughter. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I you know I had I had Stella and you know I grew up a lot. I wow. grew up a lot and you know that's what really got my career going. I was happy doing theater in New York. Okay, okay. I wasn't getting paid no money, but I had my pictures in the cleaners. Right. And I got free pizza on, on the neighborhood and I was happy. I was like living a Sesame Street life. But exactly. I, you know, I was really, you know, right. comfortable. Right, but once the wife pulls yeah. over and says I'm pregnant, you're not as comfortable yeah. as you thought. Mm -hmm. And you know, pizza every day is not cool. Mm -hmm. Gotta get a real job. You know, I had to go to LA okay. and really hustle and you know, it, for some reason going to LA brought me back to New York. Okay. Where I landed Shaft and met John Singleton. Yes. And then the wire. Yes, now with the wire, um, this is the last season. How do you feel about that? You know, a lot of people ask this question and um, <laughs> And I'm happy that uh, everybody fell in love with The Wire. Mm -hmm. We have great support, thank you to all the fans out there. Yes. So, you know, I'm glad people caught on and realized that it was a, it's a, a great show that, that, that deals with more than just entertaining, mm -hmm. but education mm -hmm. and social. Mm -hmm. So when people say, you know, how do I feel about it, you know, it's, it's bittersweet. I'm very upset that, you know, we're, we're ending when I feel like we were just about to, you know, okay. rise to the pinnacle. Okay. Okay. And, um, you know, you're always going to miss the check. I ain't gonna lie, I'm gonna miss that steady Keep it real. Keep okay. it real. But, five years of playing a junkie, I feel like I need to get clean for real. Yeah. Like, after five years of bubbles, right. I'm ready to move on, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and show my art and, and, and become different characters. Okay. So it's, it's, and, I, and I think with the way you look, I don't think you have any problems with, you know, being typecast. I think, I think know, people I, are going to be calling you right now for, for like, you know, the I hope so. I, I, I try to make bubbles a sex symbol and didn't work out. I wanted to make love on cardboard. <laughs> they didn't want to go for it. It didn't work out. So it didn't happen. So I would love, you know, I'm, I'm not worried about being typecast. I just okay. want to say that for the record. Right. I want to work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know that in Hollywood you're only as good as your, your last performance. And they think I'm an incredible junkie and they think I can do it well. I'll do every drug <laughs> in the game. That means I'll be working forever. There's a lot of drugs out there. I'll do the legal drugs. I'll do the illegal drugs. I'll do that. I don't mind. But I want Hollywood to know that I can do different things. Right, right. But I'm not worried about typecast because you know when I first got the 
when I first got bubbles, mm -hmm. you know, I got a little nervous. But I thought about Richard Pryor and Piano oh, Man. Yes, exactly. I thought about Sam Jackson, of course. You know, exactly. I thought about Al Pacino and Panic and Needle Park. And talent always rises. Right, right. If I'm good at what I do and I, you know, I perform well. Exactly. Holly Berry did the same thing. Holly Berry did the crazy jungle Oscar, fever and got Oscar. Oscar, you know. So, so I'm, not, I'm not worried about typecasting. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just worried about staying busy right. and working and being productive. Because the one thing I always want to do, again, with my daughter, mm -hmm. is look at her and tell her that dreams come true. Dreams come true. It's not just a joke. It's not just a slogan. But you gotta work hard. You gotta work hard. Mm -hmm. It can happen. And I'm in Baltimore six months out of the year. Okay. So I'm away from the family. That's one of the sacrifices that I had to learn to learn okay. to grow and deal with. But it's worth it. To look in her eye and tell her dreams come true and really mean it. Wow. So that's been that's been the most, I guess, the important part or thing I walked away from this whole five years of the wire. Wow. Classes. A nice little check. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but really to look at my daughter and tell her, you know, dreams come true and, and your dad is a spitting image of what hard work and dedication does. This is the perfect advice right now. And we're back. And now we're going to have some fun. We're going to do a little special edition. I have something called a hot box. And tonight we're going to do something. Those? Yeah. It's a really nice cute box. And everybody knows about oh, that box. box. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> but we're going to start off with some dice. Oh, so CeeLo. Yeah. <laughs> I got some cash. I mean, I'm on TV. See the wire. No. You understand. Okay. So what we're going to do, the rule is we're going to, you know, throw these up in the air and whatever, we you know, we come up with. We're going to talk, you know, a little bit about it. But I want to get your perspective, a male perspective from it. Okay. As a husband. My perspective. Yes. Perspective. Yes. You know, a, you know, and a husband. You know, and, uh, husband and a father. Well, a, a, a husband right now. We got the father oh, stuff. It's time to be sexy. Okay, nice. Just the husband. This is for all Father's the sexy. Yeah, of course. Oh, we already got that part out of the way. Now okay. it's like, you know. Uh, this is the part that you I'm not going with no candles. We got candles here. I'm going to give you a dice and I'll take a dice. Okay. And so, um, you want to give the guess. You go first. Throw up in the air and then... Uh... See? Okay, let's grab that. Goes to nibble, like I've been saying all day. Nibble. Okay, so... Nibbling, nipple, same, you know. Same nibbling. Thing. Nibbling, yeah. Okay, so how does nibbling play into, you know, what what is the first thing that comes to your mind? You know, nibbling. First thing that comes to my mind would be... Uh, the clitoris. I mean, and foreplay nibbling has always been a standard, standard A plus. I mean, just nibble on the on the tree a little bit. I'm about to throw these dice out the window. <laughs> I mean, it's an honor. All I do is just you know they they, it is. they escape uh, from the nibbling. They go right to the you know uh, the plunging or the licking with the chin all in there and all that. Uh, Being Cuban, I learned about all sex when I was like nine. Wow. So, you know, I, I know that at nine? nine? At nine. Nibbling. Wait a minute, what were oral sex at nine? My, my father was very afraid and wanted to make sure. Wait a minute, sure. I, need, I, need, I need a cocktail. I need a moment. Take a cocktail. Sip on that a little bit. <clears throat> okay, let's get back to this at nine. At so, nine, yeah. Cuba, huh? Yeah. Cuba, but hey. Hmm. So let's go into that. Well, what my, the, my, the father, my, father, my father said to me, listen, you make a woman come twice before you even, you know, really? start having sex with, with your penis. You, you're on the, you're on the, you're on the, you're on the, going for the goal. So, I really That's had, why he's married so fast. That's mm -hmm. another reason why I got snatched up real quick. <laughs> I bet. So, yeah. So, that's the first thing that popped my mind with nibbling. Okay. Woo! Yeah. Mm, I'm going to roll my dice now. Mm. All right. Above waist. Above waist. That's mm -hmm. a lot of area. Above waist. A lot um, of area. That's above right. waist for me, what I think about is a man's chest. Like, I love a, a really muscular guy built and just, you know, that's what it comes to my mind. What okay. comes to your mind? Um, just a, just a, a lot of different ways to please a woman. Above waist, you know. Below waist is a standard. You know it's there. So you got to go above waist and just, you know, there's a lot of points there. There's a lot of spots there that you can, uh, you know, Let's go pay into some to. of that. Let's go into some of that. Oh, yeah, it, it all depends. Yeah, give some of those husbands out there. I mean, okay. I mean you know. I mean, we, we forget. We, as we get older, we get a little, we want to get back to the TV, we want to get back to the couch and relax. So we forget about all the little sensitive spots that we did when we was in high school, like the back of the neck. You know what I mean? Oh, you see. know, the armpit is my favorite. I was, I was scared of the armpit, but I like the armpit. You know, the breasts are cool, but in between the breasts, right there, it's a very sensitive spot that you can play around with. Wow. You know, the belly button, you know, the back. There's just a whole bunch of stuff above the waist that you can, uh, you know, so I'm not, get off the couch. No, you can stay off the couch. You can, you can be on the couch, but when, you know, when it's time to you know, take care of business, don't, don't rush back. 
That's why they got. That's why a man created TiVo. So, you know, exactly. we pause it up, we ain't missing anything, and let's, you know, let's go to work. I think it's time to go right to the hot box. These dice, whew, hmm. I like, oh, there's more in the hot box. Oh, there's more in the hot box. Now, so, the hot box rule is, we go inside, and... The, the wordplay is fantastic. Yes, we right? We go inside the hot box. We're going to go inside the hot box. I tell you, my wife is Asian, <laughs> she won't see it coming. Turn up the lights. I'm gonna I'm direct it right to my producer. Yeah. Be like, right over here. Mess right now. I mean, it's strictly for the, you know, it's just, just TV. TV. It's just, you it's know, TV. it's to educate, you know, a lot of our brothers out there. So right. you go inside and you pull something out, and the first thing that comes to your mind. Do I look or just? No, you gotta go in like that. Okay. See, men don't like to go without looking. Well, why is that? Uh, we gotta see what's going on. <laughs> okay. Wow. Right. See, I pulled out two things. See, I pulled out the panties mm -hmm. and the knife. Now, I prefer to move the panties to the side. Because, you know, until the, you, you, you buy lingerie, you want to see it, you think it's pretty, I think it's pretty too. You ain't got to take it off. I just tilt it to the side. Oh. That's my thing. But if I got a knife, if I just happen to have a knife laying around, <laughs> well, then I will cut the lingerie off and we can get the business. And with a knife, you know, it's a fun thing. I, it's not my thing because, you know, I, it's just, you know. I feel a little bit like, you know, I'm Cuban, I'm Spanish, knife. You know, I feel like that's too. <laughs> yeah, you know. so it's a deadly combination. Just, but this is a good combination. It came out together. It came so out together. The logic. That's what, that's what I think of when I see that. So, so you can do the same thing. Go inside. <laughs> you looking for something particular? Take a look. I was feeling it. Wow. Like, what does this feel like? You feel the cock ring. I ain't know. You feel the cock ring. It's like, yeah, this is what I want. But now you got some wow. red duct tape. And then the knife comes back into play if I want to. If this was, with her, I think uh, I would leave duct tape. Just yeah, leave a duct yeah, tape over the box. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, um, this tape, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, making somebody a victim. S and M comes to my mind. Are you into that? No. Not but that's what comes to my mind now. Especially with it being red. Like red tape. I've never seen red duct tape, have you? It's like a Valentine's Day special. Oh, really? Yeah, it's Valentine's Day special, you know. Mm. You put it on and you, know, you won't see the blood. That's the only thing scary yeah, about see, that's, that's it. Bubbles. You get too hard that's with that's coming out right you won't now. See the <laughs> I, I just like duct tape on the mouth. <laughs> you know, I like the hands this free. Is the I like the hands free. Sometimes you gotta take the mouth up because, you know, I, I don't want to hear. You know, if I'm, if I'm not doing it too hard or if I'm doing it too too hard. And like, I, just, I don't have no complaints. Oh, so you don't like it verbal? I like, do I like it verbal? Yeah, but you know, I don't like the acting. Oh, well, yeah. Listen, I know, I know who I am. I know what I got. <laughs> I can do damage, but I don't need to overact. It's my finger, man. Stop yelling like the world's ending. It's just my finger. So don't overact me. I don't like that. As an actor, we can tell overacting. So I don't like that. So let's talk about, like, um, what's, what would you give advice to couples? What advice would you give to couples? Wow. Um... You know, I've been married. Not anything. Love. Okay. I've been married. I've been married for nine years. I've been with my, wow. my wife. Wow! Congratulations. All together for fourteen years. Nice. And I would say the one thing that really sustains us and keeps us happy is just communication and just being able not just to talk but to listen. Mm -hmm. I think that's the one thing that, that's really kept me um, happy with her and her happy with me is that we listen to each other. Okay. You know, sometimes you know you get caught up in a moment where you know you're right. You want to talk, you want to, you know, kind of bulldog your way through. And you just got pulled back. If, if somebody is really right, mm -hmm. they ain't got to work that hard to prove it. Right. You know what I mean? Just listen to, it ain't about being right or wrong. It's about listening on how it's affecting the person. Your, your partner. Mm -hmm. So I think listening is just um, key in a relationship. What about, like, give advice to my couples about, like, when they're in an argument. You know, like, what's, you know, uh, advice to a man or to the woman? Well, and, uh, again, you know, just you know, stop and pull back a little bit and listen because nine times out of ten, you're not even arguing about what the real problem is. Mm -hmm. You know, you're so busy just jumping on top of word after word that's being said. Mm -hmm. The argument is being built up about so many other different things mm -hmm. than that first thing she said to you. Mm -hmm. You know, you're so quick to defend yourself mm -hmm. or so quick to pass the blame onto the next person that you don't even hear what's being said. Mm -hmm. So you know, just listen to your partner. And you know, pull back and, and, and take time to really see where she's coming from or where he's coming from. Okay. Depending on what the case would be. And if that fails, then just crack a joke because humor is the second. Okay. You know, I keep okay. my I keep my wife laughing during during PMS. Okay. And that's very important. <laughs> and she's PMSing and I can still make her laugh. <laughs> she's, not go, she's not going nowhere. Okay, she's so is that a good secret? Like how to keep it interesting, you how to keep it fresh? You better be Nine funny. years is you know, yeah, people you better, getting divorced like this. Yes, yeah, you better have you better be a very funny dude. 
You know, it ain't just about, you know, physical, it ain't about money. You, just, you gotta make sure that you are having a good time. Okay. Having fun with your relationship. Okay, now how is it with your relationship with you being a, an actor? Does she always support your dream? Because I know that's usually hard too if, you know, one person is into this industry and the other person isn't. How, how has that, you know, well, you know what? relationship? Well, what was great about my wife, uh, Jane, is that um, she, was always, she wasn't really supportive of the career. She was always supportive of the dream. Oh. And we all have dreams. So it wasn't like my, my thing was something different than you know, mm -hmm. she was always dreamt about opening a restaurant. Okay. So you know she's been very supportive, and you know it, it wasn't even an it wasn't even a, an, an argument. Now okay. you know yeah. I, this is my job, this is what I do, and what makes it great is that you know because I'm traveling a lot, mm -hmm. we we find a time to really miss each other. We're not all we're not right. all up in each other's faces right, 24 right. seven. So when nice. I'm away, she's missing me. When I come home, I got stories to tell. Nice. You know about how Jeffrey Wright choked me up. You know things right. like you know <laughs> I got good stories to tell all the time, mm -hmm. and you know she just she's just happy to see. It. I think everybody in any any job is just happy to see somebody's dream come true, mm -hmm. and it, it, it's, 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 it's inspirational mm -hmm. and it's also motivational. You know, you feel like you can do your dream, and I think we just really empower each other. Okay. So listening and having fun. I like that. Are my two key to staying in a relationship. All right. You've heard it from both. <laughs> Andre.